Hello everyone, today I'm going to share with you a highly anticipated video and it's been a long time coming so I do apologize for how long this has taken me but this is going to be a long video because I'm going to share with you all of the best performing formulas for my very dry sensitive lips. I'm going to start with lip balms then move into sheer lip glosses and then move into more pigmented lip glosses then jump into lipsticks and lip liner. So that's the order that I'm going to go in. So if you don't wear gloss, if you don't care about lip balm, you can go ahead and skip right on through. But I'm going to start with lip balm, like I said, because I feel like that's the essential product for dry, sensitive lips that tend to crack and peel. So I like the Hydramax Plus Active Precision Lip Balm from Chanel. It comes in this little plastic tub and it's fairly lightweight it's easy to carry it smells really nice I don't have a very keen sense of smell so whenever I wear or test products the scent is not the primary source of my frustration when it comes to lip products I don't find that fragrance in particular is what triggers my lips to peel but the Chanel Hydramax lip balm is great because it actually has a very fluid texture you can't really tell because obviously it's just a it looks like a standard waxy lip balm but when you rub your finger in it. It warms up with the warmth of your skin and then it turns into almost like a liquid and it becomes very glossy and it's just a super thin but effective lip balm. And I still find that despite how thin this lip balm is, it's one of the most effective. Plus I love how it looks when worn alone because it is very glossy. But if I want something more heavy duty, if I want a little bit more exfoliating action, then I'll use my Balm de la Mer and this is a lip balm that will exfoliate your lips. So I like to scoop this out with a spatula and then apply to my lips because it is much more waxy. It doesn't melt onto the lips the way the Chanel Hydramax does. And what I like to do is leave this on overnight as a treatment and actually exfoliate my lips in the morning with a lip scrub. And the only lip scrub that I can use is the lip scrub by Sarah Happ. I was introduced to this by my friend Jessica, and even though I have seen it online, I never thought to splurge so and spend so much money on a lip scrub like this, but I've tried the Fresh, and I've tried a couple other versions, but for some reason, the sugar in, in the Sarah Hap tends to work really well for me. It has a slightly grainy texture, but I just smooth it over the lips, and then you just wipe it off. Also, another overnight treatment that I tend to use is the Hourglass Lip Oil. I really love this, but it is sticky, so I don't like to wear it on windy days so I haven't been using this often when I go out I've been using it at home when I really want my lips to feel hydrated and smooth this has the effect that the Chanel Hydramax has except in a much higher dosage because this is an oil based formula it's a lip oil but it also has the glossy effect of the Chanel so I really love all three of these the La Mer I probably use the least and it will be a reoccurring theme. I will mention it multiple times throughout this video. I try to avoid shimmer in my lip products whenever possible because the majority of the time, shimmer only makes my peeling and dryness worse. So that's just something for you to keep in mind. Not everyone has the same sensitivities. So these are tinted lip balms, but the number two YSL Volupte Share Candy in Papaya has very little color. So on my lips, it just brightens them. It brings out the natural pink in my tone, in the tone of my lips. But overall, it's just a, a very sheer balm. And that's why I love it, because it looks super natural with any look, any time of day, especially when I'm not wearing makeup. It really doesn't add to that, oh my gosh, her lips are so shiny, but the rest of her face is bare. <laughs> and it's more similar to the Lancome Balm in Love. I really love this color. This is the 100 Rose in Love, which is essentially a translucent balm as well. This one has a waxier feel, so I don't like to use this one when my lips are quite as dry. So when my lips are in relatively good condition, I will use the Lancome, just because uh, it can ha my lips will be able to handle that higher wax content. But when my lips require a little bit more TLC and I want a hint of shine and color, but with all the properties of the balm that I'm looking for, then I'll go ahead and reach for my dewy papaya. Now, a lot of times when I just want low maintenance color, something that I can continuously reapply while I'm out, I will use the Volupte Share Candy in number four. And this is pomegranate. This is a bright pink. And I've been talking about these lip balms a lot in the past few months, but that's just because I find that they really do work for me. They're not the most hydrating lip balm out there. They don't hydrate as well as the Hourglass or even the Sarah Hap Lip Slip, but I have to say that for a lip balm, a tinted lip balm, these are quite nice. And again, it has that same 
thin texture as the Chanel Hydramax lip balm, but honestly I find that when my lips are moderately chapped or dry, uh, a very heavy lip balm like the La Mer doesn't always help to relieve the, the dryness. So it's not about, you know, the heavier the balm, the better the results. It's about finding what works for you and what helps to immediately relieve the pain of the dryness and the chapping. So now that we've discussed the lip scrub and all the balms that I use, I'm going to move on to the glosses and I'm going to start with the Sheerest. First up is a very translucent lip gloss, which is essentially like a balm in lip gloss form. And this is the Sweet Creme Lip Creme. So I love this one because even though it looks really pink in the bottle, it kind of gives a milky tint to my lips, so it tones down the mauve or mauve for Canadians. I really love this color because even though it is sheer, it has sort of the same effect as the papaya, but instead of brightening my lips like the papaya does, this Sweet Creme color makes my lips, again, look more milky. And it doesn't hurt that the vanilla bean caramel scent is so so sweet and actually like an edible scent so it's very gourmand it's not one of those synthetic nasty vanilla scents which I absolutely despise and that's honestly the reason why I avoid MAC lipsticks it's not even that they irritate my lips so much as I can't stand the smell and when I say I can't stand the smell of something you know it's really bad because I'm not sensitive to smell whatsoever so it for some reason I just can't stand super synthetic vanilla scents. But this one isn't that synthetic at all and it's very hydrating. There is a hint of shimmer in it but there's no irritation whatsoever. So if for some reason I forget to carry one of the balms with me then usually I'll have this in my purse because I have multiples of this and I just leave them around the house and grab them whenever I need them. So I love this one. I highly recommend it. And the lip cremes in general are a great range for those of you with dry lips. And now for the Benefit Ultra Plush Lip Gloss. I've talked about this before. This is in the color Kiss Me. This is my favorite Benefit lip gloss and it looks strange in the tube because it's purple and I really don't like purple lip tinted things. But for some reason this one really works for me. And I've tried the others in this range and I thought the pinks would work better for me. But for some reason Kiss You, I'm sorry did I say Kiss Me before? I'm sorry. Kiss You is the only color that I really really love. And I think that this formula is very similar to the Juicy Tubes, but thinner, sort of like the Hydramax. So again, I highly recommend this. The Kiss You color has a strong blue lean, so it actually makes your teeth look whiter, and I think that's why I love this so much. Now finally, some more Chanel. As many of you know, the Gloss Mares have been some of my favorite lip glosses since I started YouTube, and that was a long time ago. <laughs> so I've been wearing the Gloss Mares, and I have a fairly large collection of these, because even though the ones with shimmer sometimes do tend to dry out my lips a little bit more, I still love all of them. And for some reason, the number 108, this is Constellation, this one has a gel formula, unlike other shimmery Chanel glosses, particularly in the Gloss and Mare line, they don't have that gel formula. But Constellation in particular is awesome. I absolutely love it. It has a very cushiony feel, so the glitter doesn't really sit on your lips the way that cream shimmery lip glosses do. So I highly recommend you try this one first. Chanel Mica is also another really good one, but Constellation is still it feels more more like a gel. And that's why I love the other two here that I'm going to share with you. This is number 437, and 165 is Volupte. Day. I also really love this one. And the reason why I still collect these is because this is the first designer lip gloss that I discovered that I absolutely loved and did not cause any adverse side effects to my lips. So even though, again, the ones with shimmer are a little bit more hit and miss, the ones without shimmer are always hits for me, so I continue to buy the ones without any shimmer. So now I have two Laura Mercier lip glosses that I wanted to show you. This is her classic lip gloss and I just wanted to share the Bellini color because this is the permanent one and this one does have shimmer in it but it doesn't irritate my lips too much. And now I'm going to show you Camellia which is a limited edition so this one's no longer available unfortunately but I just wanted to show you a few colors without the shimmer and that's because a lot of these glosses are made some with shimmer and some without just like with the Chanel Gloss Amers. And the Laura Mercier lip glosses without shimmer are fabulous. They're very similar to Chanel's except probably a little bit more fluid and less like a gel. But otherwise I absolutely love them too. They're a really great affordable splurge. I'm going to talk about two NARS lip glosses. These are both without shimmer. The first one I have is Puree. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Puree? Puree? <laughs> I 
I don't know exactly, but it has a, the tiniest applicator on the planet. But believe it or not, it's excellent at lining the lips, especially if you have a thin upper lip like I do, then it's really nice if you have a minute to take a look in the mirror to line your lips with it and it actually makes your lips look fuller. So I like this lip gloss formula a lot. It is a little stickier. I also ordered Odalisque. I just haven't had a chance to photograph or use it. And this one is a nude brown peach. So I like both of the colors. Here's a comparison of the two so you can see more true to color. They're both very natural looking lip colors. And actually, the pink version of this NARS is most similar to my lip color. So when I want something truly natural, then I reach for this one. Now for the only lip gloss that I'll be featuring today that has a slightly tingly feeling on the lips. This Bare Minerals Marvelous Moxie lip gloss formula is fabulous. So the reason why I love the Marvelous Moxies is not just because of the applicator style, which is long and slanted. I just really, really, really adore the Party Starter color, and this is the coral. It's a really bright, bright coral, and it's not too orange. I was afraid it would make my lips look a little bit more sallow, but it's very brightening, and I absolutely love Rebel as well. And Rebel is more of a baby mauve pink. It's just phenomenal. Both of them are really great and they smell like peppermint and usually lip plumping ingredients or anything that makes my lips feel even remotely tingly will cause peeling but these don't cause my lips to peel. In fact they look super glossy and healthy even after I take the color off. So these are stickier and they last a bit longer. Most of the glosses that I showed in the beginning of the video last anywhere from one to three hours. The glosses that I'm showing now last anywhere from two and a half to three and a half to four hours, depending on if how much I'm talking or if I'm eating. Now, going back to the Armani Flash Lacquers, I featured them in my top 13 of 2013 because they were the best new lip gloss release and they're just super comforting, not sticky whatsoever. They feel more like a gel the way the Chanel Gloss Amers do and the coverage is actually much better than I expected. So with colors like 519, which is more of a raspberry shade, the color coverage is quite good. So they're more opaque than your standard lip gloss and even the 107, which is more of a milky nude pink, still has great coverage. And I have swatches of these with the colors actually on my lips on my blog, so you can go check these out. I highly recommend these two. These are my favorite, but it seems like most of my readers who or viewers who have purchased the Flash Lacquers most favor 20, 520. And last but not least, to wrap up the lip glosses, I have my Chanel Rouge Allure Extrade Glosses. And yes, it has the longest name for a lip gloss ever. Sorry, there was a piece of dust floating in the air. My favorite colors in this formula are limited editions and no longer available. So for some reason, they always make the best shades limited editions. So 70 and 50, 517, a red and a nude, are my top two. I think both of them have been reviewed extensively on my blog. They're gorgeous, but unfortunately I won't spend too much time talking about them because they're not available anymore. Both of them have shimmer, but I have no issues wearing them. They are like a liquid lipstick and less of a gloss, and they just feel so comforting. They really hug the surface of the lips, and they last and last. So I'm going to talk to you about 52, which is Genie. It's actually one of the first colors that I bought. It's fairly similar to Chanel Volupte, Day, except maybe a little bit more orange and more noticeably orange on my lips. It's a fairly pretty color. I don't love it as much as I love these two limited editions that I just mentioned, but it's a good color to talk about because it has more of a glossy gel texture than the other two. So the ones with shimmer in this range seem to be more of a metallic sort of cream, which is actually more in tune with the Limitier de Beauté lip cremes. But the Rouge Allure Extrade Glosses in 52 or some of the other pinks like Imaginaire, they're more like a gel. So this formula, this Rouge Allure Extrade Gloss formula, ranges quite a bit. So some can be hit or miss depending on your preferences. And that's a wrap for all of my lip glosses. I really love lip gloss. That's why there's so many. And that's not even all the lip gloss that I own. That's all the lip gloss that I love. <laughs> so I know it's a lot, but I just wanted to show different colors and different price ranges so that you have some options. Now for the lipsticks and lip liners. When I use lip liner, which I'm very particular about, I only use Lancome or Chanel. In Lancome, I usually use Natural Mauve because that's the closest to my lip color. Now for my favorite lipstick. So my absolute holy grail lipstick formula is the Tom Ford lipstick. 
and I love Crimson Noir. This is, I think this was limited edition, unfortunately, but I'm sure you can still find it online. It's a very deep red, and you're going to see a lot of red lipsticks because most of the time, if I'm going to wear a lipstick, I want something that's very pigmented. And the older I get, the more I love red. I don't know what it is. It's just a natural progression. <laughs> and then I also love Spanish Pink. This is a great everyday color to wear. And it's not too it's not too pale. It's not like blush nude where I feel like I have to be wearing a lot of makeup to pull it off. I feel like Spanish Pink, which is number one, is one of those colors that's perfect for fair to probably medium skin tones to wear every day, whether you're wearing makeup or not. And then last but not least, I love Sable Smoke. This is my Holy Grail nude color. It's a little dark, so I do like to top this one with gloss. But Sable Smoke is the only nude that leans more brown that I can wear and not look sickly. I highly recommend you try Sable Smoke first. It's beautiful. Now between the Tom Ford Ultra Shine Lip Gloss and the Lip Color Shine Lipsticks, it's a tough choice because as much as I love lip gloss, I actually really love sheer lipsticks. So I like sheer lip gloss, sheer lipstick. I'm big on translucent lips. I just really like the way the shininess makes my lips look fuller, but naturally so. And that's why I'm going to show you two sheer lipsticks today. One's called Abandon and the other one called is called Smitten. Smitten is number two and it's my favorite lip shine color. And it's sheer but it has a peachy pink tone with a lot of shimmer. So even though these do have a lot of shimmer, they don't irritate my lips too much and they don't cause peeling. So I highly recommend these. I have swatches of all of these on my blog. Sable Smoke is actually a little bit more pink terracotta in comparison to Abandon, but Abandon's a little bit easier to wear on the daily. So that's why I like it. I really love a little bit darker nudes. I don't like nudes that wash me out too much and make my complexion look super pale or give you, you know, um, what do they call it? Concealer lip? I just really don't like that look. So it just doesn't work for me. You know, different strokes for different folks, everybody. After Tom Ford, my lipsticks of choice would have to be Armani's. I love all of Armani's lipsticks. I love the Rouge Armani, the Rouge Ecstasy CC lipstick by Armani, the Rouge Darmani Shears. And the one that I wear the most actually is the Rouge Darmani Sheer in 505. It is the perfect baby pink. And I love this lipstick because it's super glossy at first, but it dries down to a normal lipstick which is a satin, and it just wears really long but is super comforting, so I love this one. Next would be 515. This is a pale pink. For some reason, Armani just does some of my favorite baby pinks, and that's why I'm showing you these two because they're the two that I reach for the most, and I'm very particular with my pinks because a lot of pinks are too bright for me, So I, but then when I go to a baby pink, they are too cool or too pale. So these two are the best, and that's why I'm recommending them and showing you these in particular even though I do have more Armani lipsticks and a lot of them are sitting back there. And as far as the CC lipstick goes, Beige 100, which I thought was a little too pale at first, is actually really nice when layered on top of the Volupte de Sheer Candy Papaya color, so number two. And these two create a really natural but not too pale nude color. And for some reason, the Armani CC lipstick is the only lipstick that actually makes my lips look better after I take the lipstick off. The combination of ingredients in this lipstick, for some reason, are able to effectively exfoli exfoliate my lips while I'm wearing the lipstick. And so when I remove the color at the end of the day, my lips look ultra soft and smooth, like I exfoliated using the Sarah Hap lip scrub. So it's kind of an amazing product. And not to say that it doesn't look good on immediately, I find that with the CC lipsticks, less is more. So you don't really want to swipe more than one or two times across unless you're really trying to build up the color. I tend to wear it chilly and it's still just as effective. So the CC lipstick, it might not win you over at first, but just give it a shot and keep wearing it because it does some amazing things for the lips. So I love number 100, and I also have Tokyo, which is a bright pink. It's probably a little bright for winter, but it's perfect in the spring and summer. And now I'm going to talk to you about some more luxury products. These are Guerlain's Rouge G's, and unfortunately, I have a hard time finding Rouge G's that I really love. So they make a lot of darker, deeper colors, and that's great, but I don't really like to wear those colors on a daily basis. I really don't like medium pinks. For 
some reason they just don't really work with my complexion and they kind of age me so that's why I try not to wear them and it's not to say that you can't wear medium pink lipstick because I don't like it it just happens to flatter medium dark to tan skin the best so anyway I'm going to show you the two Guerlain lipsticks that I really do wear often and this one's number 25 this is a blood red lipstick and it really looks like blood sometimes it scares my friends because they say your lips look so bloody <laughs> but this one is a gorgeous brilliant red and this one is probably one of the most comforting lip lipsticks that I own and wear period I mean it's just so creamy and beautiful on it just wears and wears and it doesn't make my lips look dry or feel flaky at the end of the day so if you can if you are looking for a red lipstick I highly recommend number 25 and if you haven't seen my Guerlain reviews before, they have the large jeweled mirror case. Now this one is an old one. I believe it was a limited edition, so you probably can't find this now. It's number 71 and it comes in a black lacquered case. I really love this particular color, even though it is sheer and sparkly. It doesn't make my lips feel or look chalky, especially when it's peeling. A lot of those lip products with shimmer really accentuate any sort of peeling, flaking, or cracking. But I find that Guerlain's lipsticks in particular really help to soothe your lips. So number 25, this red, is very, very moisturizing. And it's hard to find lipsticks that are truly moisturizing because most lipsticks tend to dry out my lips. Whenever I wear Guerlain lipsticks or Armani lipsticks or even Tom Ford lipsticks, my lips are comfortable all day. Now I'm going to talk to you about the Suku creamy glow lipsticks, which I believe are being discontinued because I can't seem to find them online anymore and I have heard rumors on the blogosphere that they are being discontinued. I really like number two and this is a very popular medium pink. It is a little brighter than I expected but I really like it for when I need a brighter pink and this is number one. This is a slightly lighter pink, number one. So between number one and two I obviously prefer number one because it's a lighter pink but number two is also really nice. You can actually wear them together as well. <laughs> I love that the Suku lipsticks look and feel like the Rouge Darmani Shears, but they're a little bit more pigmented and they last a little bit longer. So they have a better dry down, I think. It's unfortunate that they're being discontinued, but they were very difficult to procure if you live in the US anyway, unless you're willing to pay really high markups or ask favors from lots of friends that live abroad. But in the instance that you wanted to try the Suku Creamy Glow, I highly recommend you check out the Rouge Darmani shears first and again my favorite one is 505 now for some more creamy moisturizing lipsticks. So the Guerlain and Suku are some of the best in terms of creaminess and richness, but I feel that for the price, the Lancome color designs, whether they're in the cream or the matte, are some of the best bang for your buck lipsticks. I really love Lancome's dark pinks. This one is called Socialite. It's a hot pink with a blue tone, and it's gorgeous on the lips. It makes your teeth look whiter. And I also have Intense Fuchsia, which is more of a a true pink and it's not too red not too blue and it it really brightens up your complexion I actually like to mix this one with reds and even though I chose to show two fuchsias in this particular video all of the cream and the matte color design lipsticks are really affordable but they're super comforting on the lips and as much as I love the Lancome Rouge Absolute formula I find that the color range of the color design lipsticks is a little bit more my style my favorite Lancome lipstick however However, is the Rouge in Love in 322 and this is the Coral in Love. I think that this is probably the perfect coral pink lipstick on my complexion and it's not too drying. It is more of a matte lipstick but if I wear a lip balm underneath it it's perfect. It, it lasts all day. The color just wears beautifully and there's not too much shimmer in it. And now for my favorite YSL lipstick. This is the Glossy Stain which is a lipstick stain and gloss all in one. I was super obsessed with these for a while. When they first launched these were all that I would wear but most recently I haven't been wearing them as much because I don't really crave that intense pigment color but I still love number seven I think this is my favorite of all the permanent ones that I tried in the beginning but most recently I've really been loving number 25 this is the fuchsia neo classic 
And this one is a fuchsia pink, but it has a very strong red lean. Fuchsias that lean more blue do make my teeth look whiter, but at the end of the day, I feel like both of them are still very flattering depending on what the rest of my makeup looks like. So it just depends on what kind of makeup look I want to wear that day. The glossy stains are perfect for weddings or events where you don't really want to touch up your color too often. It doesn't fade and it doesn't get really patchy, so that's why I highly recommend them for traveling or events since they don't really require that much maintenance. And I love low maintenance, fully opaque colors. So if that sounds right up your alley, then you need to run to a YSL counter to pick up some glossy stains. They do have a formula that thickens on the lips and that's what helps it last a lot longer, but if you can get past that, then I promise you, you'll become addicted and that's all you'll be able to wear for a while. Now I'm going to finish up this video, yay, with two affordable lipstick formulas. First I'll talk about the M lipsticks, and M Cosmetics makes some really great lipsticks. And again, my lips peel, my lips get chapped, my lips dry out from lip product. I cannot wear YSL Rouge Volupe Days. I can't wear any lip product with SPF, even lip balms, just because my lips react so badly to SPF. But again, going back to the lipsticks, M. Michelle Fawn's Wine Stain, Cuddling, and Wow Pink are my favorite lipsticks. They're all very bright colors. I find that for the more nude or the more translucent colors, all the other products that I recommended in the video are probably better for that. But if you like full, intense pigment and true full color coverage for an affordable price, definitely check out M. Michelle Fawn lipsticks. Now, the Too Faced La Creme lipsticks are quite nice. These are a little bit more expensive than Michelle's lipsticks, but they're more of a sheer translucent type that I prefer when I want more of an everyday lipstick. These are really beautifully done lip balm lipstick hybrids. So they're not like Michelle's lipsticks because they are much sheerer in comparison. My favorite of the bunch that I have here is Fuchsia Shock and it sounds really scary, but it's quite buildable. So it's not too fuchsia at first. And I've used it in a tutorial back in the spring and it is a really fun color even though it looks still very scary in the tube. There's not too much slip. So even though it's a balm lipstick hybrid, it doesn't slide right off. Off my lips so it actually sinks in just a little bit and once it sets it doesn't move around so much out of the four that I own I find that juicy melons is the easiest to wear on the day-to-day -day. so I do recommend taking a look into these I will be posting a review with full swatches on the blog sometime this month so if you're interested stay tuned I will try to post swatches but because I reviewed so many lip products in this video I don't think I'll be able to post a full set of swatches of everything that I showed so I hope you can understand that it would just be almost impossible to fit all these swatches onto my arm but I hope you enjoyed the video and I know again it's been a long time coming but I hope you found some products that you might want to try I try lip products all the time I would try just about anything to see if I like it but these over the last four years of incessantly trying every lip gloss on the market these are the ones that I like the best and this is the widest variety in terms of pricing color texture comfort and style that I could possibly have shared with you. So I truly do hope that you found this helpful because this was a lot of talking for me too. So thanks very much for tuning in and if you made it to the very end, thanks so much for your support and I'll see you all very soon. Bye!